Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, or should I say, boys and girls. Um, it's my great pleasure to introduce my research area. Today, I'd like to talk about the global water issue, water shortage, and how membrane technology can save the world. Um, first of all, I'd like to briefly explain what the membrane is like. Membrane that we use for water treatment or wastewater treatment is very similar to filter paper you used to use in experiment in your uh, junior high school or elementary school. But the, uh, the membrane that we use for water treatment or wastewater treatment is much tighter and much stronger. When we look at the surface of membrane with a large magnification, you see the uh, numerous numbers of tiny pores. And the principle of membrane separation is very simple. When you apply some driving force across membranes, such as a pressure difference, um, small constituents that is smaller than the tiny pores will penetrate into the uh, permeate side, whereas the large constituent that is larger than the micropores will be suddenly retained. That's it. However, the size of the uh, tiny pores is incredibly small, say less than 0.1 micrometers. So we can very easily obtain very clear water with this simple operation. When we see the market nowadays, uh, we, have see, uh, we can see the uh, variety of the membranes. I think uh, you can very easily imagine these types of the flush sheet membranes, but the, uh, we also have string-shaped membranes like this. We call this hollow fiber membrane. This membrane is advantageous in terms of the uh, specific uh, surface area. We often use some organic polymers to produce these membranes. However, recently, um, inorganic ceramic membranes has also become popular. And the, as you can guess, um, structures of the membranes will certainly affect the membrane performance. Here you can see the uh, cross-section image of the membrane and the surface structure of the membrane. And one important topic here is that we have not optimized the uh, structures of the membranes. Nowadays, we can control the internal and the surface structure of the membranes, but we don't have any consensus uh, optimal structures of it. Additionally, um, we don't have any consensus uh, about the optimal material uh, for the production of membranes. We don't know whether which is better, um, organic membranes or inorganic membranes. So my point is, um, now, still, um, production of membranes is a big frontier for researchers. Okay, so let me get back to the main story. Um, as you have heard, well, this century is called the century of water. Why? Now we are facing the uh, serious water shortage. You may not feel it if you live in a uh, water-rich country such as Japan. However, water shortage is really serious and now is recognized by the world leaders. You probably know the annual Davos meeting where world leaders get together and discuss important issues. And in the recent uh, Davos meetings, global water shortage has been a uh, very important topic. And in this year's Davos meetings, it was said that water scarcity is the second most important world risk. And some people caution that even a war may be caused by water shortage. And here you can see the uh, water scarcity index prepared by United Nations. In this slide, that color indicates the area where they are suffering from serious water shortage. As you can see, water shortage is really serious all over the world. And we sometimes or often forget the importance of water. We cannot imagine our life without water. And also, we need a huge amount of water for industry and agriculture. Unfortunately, however, there is no replacement for water. So, 
According to one pessimistic expectation, water may be become more variable than oils in the near future. So understandably, we need to do something to address this global water shortage. And one viable option would be wastewater reclamation, particularly wastewater reclamation and reuse aided by membrane technology. So that's why I would say membrane can save the world. And one extreme and advanced example of wastewater reclamation and reuse aided by membrane technology is seen in Singapore, where they are suffering from a serious water shortage. They are trying to use wastewater effluent as a part of drinking water source. Well, to make the wastewater drinkable, of course, they need to use very advanced technology. Membrane can do that. And the uh, wastewater treatment, uh, wastewater treated by membrane is called their new water. And this terminology is very uh, important terminology um, among the researchers. Everybody knows it. And well, this new water is very important concept and the uh, membrane is the key technology for the uh, production of new water. And now, um, it, when it comes to the uh, you know, membrane, Japan is very strong. In the membrane market, Japanese companies are dominant, and even in Singapore, they use Japanese membranes. And Hokkaido University is one of the uh, well, most important research institutes for the uh, membrane technology. But here I need to confess, well, at present, water, wastewater reclamation using membranes has not become common. Why? Well, there is a problem in this technology, and this problem is actually my research topic, as I will explain later. Well, when it comes to the application of membrane to the uh, wastewater treatment, technology called membrane bioreactor, or MBR, is very promising technology. It has been drawing a lot of attention, and many researchers, including me, believe that this technology will be the uh, mainstream technology in the near future. And I think MBR can change the wastewater management system and eventually save the world. So from now, let me briefly explain uh, what is the uh, currently working wastewater management system. Well, now we are using the uh, centralized system. And the, here in the centralized system, we installed a big large-scale wastewater treatment plant, and this large-scale wastewater treatment plant collects a huge amount of wastewater by using very complicated large-scale wastewater collection network. And then the, uh, it will discharge treated water into one point. This is the currently working wastewater management system. And as a result of using this centralized system, as we are seeing, in the real world, wastewater reclamation and reuse is not common. Why? Well, mainly because distance between demand and supply is widely separated. Treated wastewater is only available in the area um, that is close to the wastewater treatment plant. And additionally, I would say the quality of the treated water is not high enough. So application of the uh, treated wastewater is rather limited at present. Then, what would happen if we can change this centralized system into decentralized system? Um, each small community has their own treatment facility, and the quality of the treated water is very high. For example, that might be comparable to the uh, drinking water. Then, there is no reason to hesitate to use treated water, it is free. Then wastewater reclamation and reuse will be facilitated. So by this centralized system, we can have the decentralized system. Now question is, what kind of technology is necessary or suitable for this decentralized system? Treatment technology should be very compact and it should be easy to operate, automation is desirable, 
and it should produce the very high quality of treated water. MBR can perfectly meet these criteria. So by using MBR, we can have decentralized system and we can promote wastewater reuse and we can mitigate water shortage. Let me point out one additional thing, one additional advantage of this decentralized system. Well, with this kind of decentralized system, transportation of water is much cheaper and easier because the size of the wastewater collection system is very small. This means, um, this means the installation of the uh, decentralized system can be very short. This is very important aspect for the developing countries where they need to quickly improve sanitary conditions. They cannot wait for a long time to install large-scale, complicated centralized system. But by using this kind of decentralized system, we can quickly install the wastewater management system and we can quickly improve sanitary conditions in developing countries. So, um, by using MBR and the decentralized system, we can improve the uh, sanitary condition and, well, in this sense as well, we can save the world. In spite of the uh, advantages I have just described, where well, I need to say, the use of MBR has been still limited, and decentralized wastewater management systems are still in the uh, minority. Why? There is a problem in this technology. Um, as you can imagine, probably, in the uh, long-term operation of a membrane process, including MBR, some component will accumulate on and in membranes, and permeability of membrane will be reduced. This phenomena is membrane fouling. Membrane fouling will increase both operational and initial cost. So this limits the wide ap application of membrane technology. So for widespread use of MBR technologies, we need to address this problem caused by membrane fouling. And therefore, understandably, membrane fouling is very important and hot research topic. To control membrane fouling, we need to know what fouls membrane. Many researchers have investigated this topic. And we have a kind of consensus that well, when it comes to the uh, uh, membrane fouling in MBR, some polysaccharides or proteins are the major players in membrane fouling. But there is very limited information on detailed features of polysaccharides or proteins. We don't know what types of proteins or polysaccharides are involved in the uh, membrane fouling in MBR. So this is a problem. And well, um, when it comes to the analysis of proteins or polysaccharides causing membrane fouling in MBR, I think Hokkaido University is one of the leading research institutes. Um, one big advantage, or I would say one beautiful thing in Hokkaido, uh, working for Hokkaido University is that this university is a very big university. So I could find researchers who are really good at analysis of polysaccharides or protein. And we did a kind of collaboration and with the help of these professors, we could reveal the detailed information of polysaccharides or proteins causing membrane fouling in MBR. Well, I think this is the, uh, probably the first report in the world. And I think by accumulating this kind of very detailed information on polysaccharides or proteins causing membrane fouling in MBRs, uh, we will be able to develop new method to control membrane fouling in the future and we can promote the widespread use of membrane technology. So, as I have described, membrane can save the world, I think, by mitigating water shortage and improving sanitary condition in developing countries. Well, this research area is very competitive but uh, I think it's very exciting to compete with the researchers from all over the world. So I highly encourage you to join us and uh, do research together. And let's save the world. That's it. Thank you very much.